Hi drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out Rod Morgenstein. This guy plays much better than I think a lot of people realize. So let's take a listen. This is from earlier. Here we go. Rod. Okay, some already some two up, two down patterns. Hand, hand, kick, kick, right, left, right, left. A few things like that. Some six stroke rolls, some cool little stuff, sort of in but out of time. Kind of little flurries. Now we got the groove is starting to establish here. Rod Morgenstein, great drummer. I'll share more. Here we go. Yeah. That's like left, right, right, kick. Hi-hat keep big time. Complete left-handed drummer. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Triplets to 16th now. Oh, cool. Six eight. Yeah. Nice rolls and triplets. Accents is her right hand lead. Double stroke rolls and triplets. Got a hair toes. Look at the blue. Oh, four up, two down, two up, two down. like flame action yes two up two down and triplets sixteen no triplets yes Wow, that was freaking amazing. God, I didn't pause it much because I was just like enamored with what was going on there. Rod Morgenstein obviously plays at a very high level. 
This reminds me of something I witnessed when I watched Journey perform on their Escape Tour album. I was living in Seattle and they performed two nights in a row at the Seattle Center Coliseum. And I got to sit behind the band, watch the great Steve Smith, who did this amazing drum solo with this pre-recorded kind of sequence track that was done on keyboards. And this is pretty much that. Only, of course, this is like earlier than that. So perhaps uh, this was an influence. I don't know. But I used this book by Rod Morgenstein in my private studio and have for probably two decades called The Drum Set Musician. It's one of my favorite books of all time because it has three chapters. The first chapter deals with eighth note beats. Second chapter deals with 16th note beats. And the third chapter is triplets and shuffles. So by the time a student gets through these three chapters, and their songs at the end of each chapter with and without drums, they really have a good foundation in eighth note, sixteenth note, and triplet bass grooves, and can really launch from there into playing lots of material that's out on the radio today. So Rod did a really good job doing, doing this book. Of course, this is with the Dixie Dregs back in 73, I believe is what the video said. And after that, he played with this, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Winger? One of these pop bands that became really popular for a period of time and he made quite a bit more money in the rock arena than he did in playing this sort of uh, progressive jazz fusion stuff which was the Dixie Dregs at the time. Very progressive, very advanced stuff. So if you want to hear Rod really tear it up, obviously he is here. Beautifully done, beautifully done solo in my opinion. Very musical, super great command over different shifting time signatures, different subdivisions, great facility, very creative. I had not heard this solo before, like all these solos, it's just, you know, I'm just going for it and checking it out, but I was very, very impressed, and I've seen Rod play and got a chance to meet him at an AM show, and he said he and Rick Mattingly, the co-author of The Drum Set Musician, spent 10 years before they released that book, just fine-tuning it, so a lot of love <laughs> went into it. Now there's a second edition with some more odd meter stuff in it, which I'm using as well. So even though I've written some books, I always like students to start with this one. It's a great foundation. Rod's such an awesome player, very musical, very technically advanced, um, stylistically diverse, the whole 6-8 kind of thing, playing along with the sequence, the whole cowbell, live in 73. I don't know how many guys were doing this back then. I mean, some were. Of course, the whole popularity of drum machines and metronomic timekeeping happened more in the 80s, probably late 70s, early 80s, which really destroyed some live drumming feels. But, you know, of course, it's been assimilated. Now we play with those kinds of tracks, as you heard here, which was started way back there. So it reminds me of some of the earlier Steve Smith I heard with uh, Jean Luponti on Enigmatic Ocean, where he really stretched out more of that fusion kind of approach, which is kind of my favorite genre of drumming, to be honest with all of you. Uh, I like playing in multi-styles, but fusion is the fusing together of all these different styles. And so the Dixie Drags would be right down my alley in terms of the kind of music that I would probably be the most passionate to play because it's so diverse and it has more of a powerful approach that's, you know, kind of the rock foundation, but the improvisation, which is from the jazz tradition. So we're not just playing in swing and at a conversational volume, we actually can play with a lot more energy if we want and a lot more creative influences because we're fusing together so many styles and we're not really trying to be too niche oriented so or niche so i hope you like this i certainly enjoyed it rod morgenstein might want to check this guy out one of the great musical drummers great author educator love this guy and a completely left-handed drummer like phil collins so it's kind of fun to see somebody play that kit and just nail it so if you liked it give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you're interested in any private lessons i have all the information in the text box below you can contact me be happy to help show you how to play all these things that all these great drummers are doing to the best of my ability so until then have a great day and we'll see you on the next reaction and analysis video next time take care Bye bye